is important. We live in a world that doesn't rest a whole lot. They're so um, busy. They're so concerned about life. They're so rushing and everything else. It's because they don't know who to trust or because they haven't learned how to trust yet. You know, God is faithful. He is true. His words are true. When he said, I take care of you, you need to just pull up a pillow and lay back and rest. Because he said he'll take care of you. We don't need to get encumbered about doing stuff. You know, whatever the world says, whatever the pressures are, roll those babies off. You know, God didn't expect us to take those. We're not built for it. We're not built for it. He is. He is. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. That's rest like the world doesn't know. That's where you can just lay down at night and sleep. He said he gives sleep to his beloved. You just rest in his promises even when it don't look like it's happening. <laughs> there, lion, there's the key. That's when you really just decide to rest. So let's sing that bridge. I will rest, and then we'll go to the chorus, and then out. I will rest. In just close your eyes and work your hands. I come to dance. Is your faithfulness? I will rest. In your promises, I come to dance. One more time. I will rest. I will rest. In your promises, I'm confident. Is your faithfulness for you are Take a break there, boy. Wilbur, we made it. Hey, Marcus. We're at Faith Life Church in person. Do you think next time I can ride the horse and you make the horse noises because my legs are tired from all the walking? Sure. No, we can trade on the way back. Oh, thank goodness. Wilbur, aren't you excited to be here and give our offering in person this oh. time? Normally we have to give because yeah. we're helping with the kids' virtual church, so we do it online, but we're yeah. here. We can do it in person. Yeah, I guess so. I mean... Don't so? get me wrong, I'm excited to be here at Faith Life Church, but I don't, I just work so hard on growing these apples, I, I don't know that I want to grow them. I don't want to, I don't want to sow them all. You don't I don't want to sow our apples. Don't know if you want to sow them. We work so hard. Hmm, okay. Wilbur, do you have your little Bible with you? <sighs> Marcus, do I have that Bible? I keep that thing on me. I always leave the house with my Bible and my corn in that order. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad you have the Bible. Yep. Can you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9? 2 Corinthians. No, it, it's Corinthians, not Corinthians. That's what I said. Okay. Can I see that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. All right. So, Marcus! They got big old Bibles up on the screen there. Wilbur, there's one on this side too. They got two big old Bibles up on the screen. Bibles on the wall. I'm going to read awesome. this one. You read that one. Okay, you can read along with me. It says, For each of you should give what you have decided to give in your heart, okay. not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God oh, loves a cheerful compulsion. giver. I know that word. I have heard it before, heard it in the school years. 
Oh, what is it? It's on the tip of my tongue, composure. It's like the tractor back at the farm. You know that tractor? Compose a whole trailer behind no. it. Wilbur, that is not right. But I was close. No, you were actually pretty far off. Composure. Well, if you know what it means, why don't you tell me? Okay, it's a... Uh... If we had like an easier version to read of this, I could explain it to like you so well. Like an easy to read version? Yeah, like that! They oh. just made the version for us! Hey, that looks like you can read it. Why don't you read yeah, that one? Yeah, okay, we can read this one. Okay. Over on this side. Oh. Yeah. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. You should not give if it makes you unhappy or if you feel forced to give. Oh. Does that make more sense? That makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah, than okay. Now, now you read this next part. Okay. God. Yeah. Keep going. Loves. Yes. Keep, you can read the whole, the whole sentence to the period. You want me to read the whole sentence? Okay. God loves those who are happy. Happy to give. Happy to give, Wilbur. God loves those who are happy to give. We want to be happy to give. Oh. I'm getting it now. The, the gears are turning. I, I'm not quite there. But I, I think I'm starting to understand a little, a little more bit. Sense? It's making a little bit more sense okay, to me. Okay, let's do this. Do you remember years ago back when we planted the apple seeds that grew the trees these apple came from? Well, sure, Marcus. I remember just like it was yesterday. Wilbur, what are you looking at? I'm just reminiscing. Oh, right. Well, can you reminisce out loud and recall what we did when oh, we planted sure. those? Yeah, we dug the hole, we put the seed in it, and we... Prayed over and asked the Lord to bless it. Did he bless it? Well, that is evident. Look at all these wonderful apples. Yeah, these are some of the best apples we've ever grown. Almost like they're store-bought. Yeah, and do you remember what else the Lord did? <laughs> well, when... sure. Well, oh yeah. I, if I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a drought when we tried to grow this apple tree, but we asked the Lord to bring in the water, and sure enough, the rains came every time we needed it, and... Thanks to the Lord and his faithfulness, the tree grew strong and it grew big and abundant. And it's all because of the Lord we have these apples. You know what, Marcus? The Lord's so good that he, he blessed us with these apples. We got so many of them, that's not even a fraction of the amount of apples we have. We got a whole barn back home. Exactly. So if we've got so many apples, Marcus, why don't we just give these Where? apples right now? You're getting it. You're I want to give it. these apples, Marcus. You gotta love to Where give. do I put these apples? Give me an envelope. Okay, hold I need on. an envelope. Hold on. <laughs> let's, let's give everyone else a chance to give. Oh. If any of y'all need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. Our awesome ushers will be happy to hand you one. We need an envelope right here in the middle. A couple more over here on yeah, the left. a couple back here in the back. Over here, some of them youth oh, need one. Also, if you're going to write a check, just write it to FLC. Which stands for? Faith, Life, Church. Where we're at. Well, I, I got that one wrong. I thought it was something else. Nope. Okay. Well, seeing a lot of just blank stares, so if y'all are ready to give, go ahead and stand up with us. We will uh, pray over our offering and then receive it. Go ahead and raise your offering up to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give into your kingdom. I ask you to take this seed and bless it and multiply it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, God loves a cheerful giver. He sure does. Now, if I recall, there are some confessions we have that we say around here. Is that yes. right? Yeah, I think we got... Well, sure look, enough. Over here. All right. We're getting... Our, our buildings, buildings, our, our lands, lands, our houses, our vehicles, and our equipment. equipment. I reckon that includes horses. Yeah, you think we can get a real one? Well, yeah, he's got like 358,000 miles on it. We need a new one. Okay, we ought to keep saying that one then. All right, what okay. else we got? All, All of our, our debts, debts are being reduced, reduced and eliminated. Eliminated. Mmm, I like lemonade. Mark, that says eliminated, gone, vanished, oh, evaporated, no, that's no trace, better. gone. Yeah. No more debts, that's better. Yeah, that's better than lemonade. Okay. All right, and we got, let's see. One other one over here. God's bringing into our hands seed, seed even, even some, some great, great big Whopper chunk seeds. seeds. And I'm going to sow it joyfully, Mark. There you go, Wilbur. You got the heart now. All right, well, ushers wait on the people. I got to ride a horse. Your turn here, mister. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me.
talk about joy tonight. Amen. Well, let's pray for the service. Father, we are just so grateful to be able to gather together. You are so good to us. We have such wonderful church family. We are so thankful for each other, and we're so thankful for our pastors, thankful for what you're doing in our midst. You are so faithful. And we just ask you, Lord, for your hand on this service. Lord, that what you want done will be what's done. And Father, we ask you for a spirit of joy in this place tonight. Father, we can all use more. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. So the Lord kind of played a joke on me this week. It's a funny joke. but uh, So on the way to work on Monday, I was telling Kevin, you know what, I just need to get out of my rut. I need to do something. I need to break out. You know, it's not doing the same little thing. Well, a couple hours later, Mrs. Morris texting me, hey, how about you doing service on Friday? And I was like, I see what you did there. <laughs> He's good like that. Amen. So, you know, God is so good. <clears throat> and sometimes you can tend to get a little nervous if you're out of your, out of your normal, but it doesn't matter because God is here with us. You all brought him in with you. And, you know, we can always talk about joy and always Always do it better, amen? Always choose it over all the stuff. So, and Mrs. Moore has taught me everything I know about audience participation. So, <laughs> so there will be audience participation. So I thought we'd start off with a little icebreaker. So my uh, handsome assistant, Kevin, do you guys know that song? Um, we used to sing it like when we were little. So it goes, uh, Hallu, 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 hallelujah, praise ye. Hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Okay, so from this camera guy over here, you're going to be on Kevin's team. Come on. From this camera guy Rock over this. here, you're going to be on my team. The winning team. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so, so when we sing our part, hallelujah, you stand up, okay? Every time you sing hallelujah, stand up. Then Praise when you the Lord. What do we do? Stand up. And, and we sit back down. when they start singing, you sit down. So we're going to be up, up, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. So you ready? All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. This side, here we go. Hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Stay up. Praise ye the Lord. That's cheating. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Everybody stands up on the last praise yeah. the Lord. Okay. Hallu, hallu. Oh, ready to go? Oh, yeah, let's We'll go. do it a couple, three more times just yeah. to get our blood flowing. <laughs> hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Oh. Praise <laughs> ye the Lord. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. And then, hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. 
Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. One more time. You ready? Okay. Hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallu, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Give yourselves a hand clap. Have a seat. You can be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, now I gotta catch my breath. <laughs> Note to self, practice dancing and speaking at the same time. <laughs> no, uh, Mrs. Moore wanted me to, she had it on her heart that I just do a service about joy. And she said to me, she said, Suze, you know, you're up there, you're happy, and everybody thinks you're always happy, and you don't ever go through anything, you know? Well, that has been said to me many times in my life. So we're just going to hang out together and talk about joy tonight, amen? And I'm just so thankful for, you know, Marcus and Wilbur. <laughs> if you don't watch Virtual Kids, you need to, because <laughs> it's hilarious, <laughs> You know, and they did. I'm so thankful for them. You know, uh, Will and Isaiah have been here since they were practically babies. You know, they've grown up here, and now they're ministering here. It's so good to have church family, amen, have longevity at a place. This month marks my 20th year of being on staff. What a blessing. God is so good. Every year I'm like, thank you, Mrs. Moore, for letting me come back. I'm very thankful. <laughs> She's so good, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I wanted to read, start the night off with a verse, Psalm 68.3 in the NIV. I won't talk too fast. I'll just slow down. <laughs> Be cruising, cruising on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> it says, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. I'm going to read it again. But may the righteous, that's you and me, right? Say, I'm the righteous. Amen. Amen. Be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. And you know, I believe that Jesus is happy and joyful. And I believe that as Christians, we could do better at that. Amen. <laughs> Just on a day-to-day -day basis. Because he's done so much for us. Just like that song tonight, faithful you are. All your promises are yes and amen. Doesn't matter what we're going through in the middle of the week or at night. It just doesn't matter because God is bigger. Praise God. And life is way too short to be bummed out all the time. I mean, we should be happy every day, amen. But every, as I was getting ready this week, every verse, practically every verse I looked at about joy or joyful, um, he, the Lord is telling us to do it. He's not saying, I'm going to put it on you, and it's going to be perfect, and you don't have anything to do. Faith acts. Well, sometimes putting on joy can be the biggest act of faith that you have at that moment, no matter what's going on. So you got to put it on like a jacket. You know, you just look at a closet and have all these clothes. Here's grumpy... <laughs> Here's depressed, here's eh, so-so, and here's joy. That's the one you should pick every single morning. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, I want you all to be thinking, like I said, audience participation. So I'm going to share a couple of stories of times in my life when, when I chose joy. And, but I want you guys to be thinking, so if anybody of you have a testimony about, specifically about joy or overcoming depression, I'd like for you to, I'll give a time later when you can come down and share it. Is that good? So be thinking. I know y'all won't leave me hanging. <laughs> so we're out of service by 710. <laughs> no, because Mrs. Moore, she didn't want a sermon on joy. She wanted us participating. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I know God has done a lot of things for you guys. Um, you know, when I was nine years old, when I was saved, and I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and when I was nine, that summer I went to a church camp. My first church camp. Oh, it's a big time. I had all new clothes, and I wore them all the same day. <laughs> so 
know on Tuesday I had no clean clothes. But I was like, oh, yeah, I got the new clothes. <laughs> but toward the end, and it was a denominational church camp. And uh, so by the end of the week, we had this, it was out in the country up on a hill, and there was a, a tabernacle. It was just like a pavilion with no sides. And so we would have services every night. And all week long, the Lord was kind of dealing with me, you know. And you're like, you know, at nine years old, what have you got to repent for? You know, slapping your sister. I don't know. There's, there's not that many, <laughs> many big things you've done so far, but it's not about that. It's about what your heart, you know, what your heart's saying. And so the last night, they had the altar call, and I just, I was just so, so compelled to go up. So I went up there, and the little ladies were praying for me, and I just started crying with the love of God. He just like, he just like overwhelmed me with the love of God. And so I couldn't quit crying. <laughs> and so me being from a Pentecostal church, I just raised my hands. And those little denomination ladies, they would just push them down, <laughs> gently push them down. <laughs> but God was just so overwhelming me. And so I would raise them up again, and they would just push them down. <laughs> and, you know, as a kid, I'm like, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't know. But, but that's okay. They were the most precious ladies. And because of that denomination, Standing up here right now, you know, praise God. And then later on that winter, when I, I turned 10, and uh, we had a revival at our church. And during the, the service, you know, back in Pentecostal days, you know, tambourines were ringing and <laughs> all the things, you know, <laughs> all the loudness, you know, in a little country church. And uh, so our pastor, precious man, he would always want the young people to come pray at the altar. He did it almost every service. Young people come pray, you know. Well, he motioned to me, so I thought that's what he was doing. I thought he, was, oh, he wants me to pray. Okay, I'll go pray, you know, because I was up in the choir, probably playing a tambourine. I don't know. So I went to the altar, and then the evangelist, um, it was a lady evangelist, and she uh, sat down and started praying with me. Well, before I knew it, I was speaking in tongues. I mean, I wasn't even, I was, I was just, Speaking in tongues, baby, you know. <laughs> and so, um, and he had given me, I, I missed part of the story. When he motioned to me, he gave me two Kleenexes. And so, uh, so I thought, well, you know, he wants me to just pray. Okay. So I did. And then I'm speaking in tongues with those Kleenexes, one in one, the one hand and one in the other. And uh, later on, I found out that what he told me was to give the Kleenexes to that lady down in the altar who was crying. <laughs> <laughs> so I stole her Kleenexes and got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, so um, I had one boy in my class. Our church is fellowship together, so I knew he believed the same way as I did. And so whenever I went into uh, school that day, I was just so excited. And I said, Mark, do you believe in praying in the spirit, praying in tongues? He's like, yes. I said, well, I got it last night. I got it. You know, I was just a little fifth grader, you know, so excited because I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And so then he went and told his dad, who was the pastor of that church. Well, so every year for the rest of my life, I was in that church till I was 18, till Kevin and I got married. They told that story every year. <laughs> oh, do you remember the time Susie got the Kleenex? <laughs> You know, so God has always been kind of funny with me, like funny, ha-ha funny, you know. And um, so people look at my life sometimes and think, oh, she never has a problem, you know. Well, you all know that's not true, right? Because we're all on the same road of life. We're all, we're all just on the very same road. And it is up to us how we live that road, you know, it really is. We've got to choose it. We've got to choose it. You know, there's times there's things to happen to me in my childhood. I had a pretty happy childhood, but I had some crazy stuff. You know, and you have a choice. Therapy for the rest of your life or choosing, choosing the Lord. Amen. He's the, I'm not knocking therapy, but I'm telling you, Jesus is the best therapy there is. And joy is therapy on its own. The joy of the Lord, it's not something we conjure up, but it's something we put on and we yield to it. Amen? you got to yield to joy. You know, you got to yield to happiness. 
every day you got to just go for it. And um, I want to read Nehemiah 8.10. We're all pretty familiar with it, but bears repetition, right? And this is the NIV too also, guys. Um, it says, eight, uh, verse 10, This day is holy to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This day is holy to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Everybody say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, it's not just our joy that we're like, ha ha, that's so nice. It's his joy. His joy. And he, that's one of the best presents he gave us, amen? I mean, he has given us so much. Why do we waste one second not being happy? You think, well, Susan, you don't know what I've been through. doesn't matter. (laughs) We've all been through stuff. And I'm not making light of things, but I'm saying if you'll yield to joy, you will be lighter. I mean, it'll change your life. You know, it can keep you off medication. It can keep you healed. It can keep you happy. It can keep your kids at home. You know, all the, all the fun things, all the good things. Praise God. And I was listening to The Joy of Faith. Brother Moore taught that oh, a few years ago. And if you haven't listened to it lately, you should listen to it again. It's so good. But he was talking about this verse in Nehemiah. He said this day, you know, the way Nehemiah said, this day is holy to the Lord. And, and he shared that that day was the day when all the leaders come out, all the people come out, and they read the word. And then they talk about the word. It's like a big, long hours and hours and hours of reading the word. And, and he said, well, the people, the reason he had to tell them not to grieve, because they were hearing the word and they were upset. They were feeling condemned because they weren't doing the word. So there's a lot of crying, a lot of weeping, you know. But Nehemiah says, this day is holy to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know what? Don't grieve, y'all. This is the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? Every day is holy to God. You know, it says in Psalm 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. So does that mean just be glad one part of the time? No. Does it mean be glad part of the time? Does it mean be glad just part of the time? No, it means be glad all the time. Everybody say all the time. All the time. You know, and sometimes uh, we were talking about, um, Mrs. Moore and I, when we were talking about the service, and um, she said, you've been up there for 20 years, and, you know, as far as I know, I haven't had a day where I broke down crying on the stage. (laughs) Thank God. He's helping us, you know. But just a couple years ago, uh, someone... Uh, asked, Kev, asked uh, Kevin's sister, said, um, so do Kevin and Susan ever go through bad times? Are they? What? And she's like, well, yeah, because she knows us. She knows, you know, she knows us. But you know what? If you can go through life and people think you're always happy, that's a good thing. You know, and I don't say I am not saying I've arrived by any stretch of the imagination. But the Lord has been helping me with it from a young age. You know, my mom, my parents were beautiful people, but our household was not without challenges. It wasn't all happy all the time, you know. And my mom, she didn't have light on not worrying, so she was a worrier. And so if my brothers would go out, they were like two minutes late, she'd be like pacing the floor, and oh my gosh, they're in the hospital. You know, she really, she's one of those guys. So, but she didn't know, you know, she didn't know. And so, but I remember being a little kid going, you know what, when I get big, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You know, so all along, the Lord has been helping me to see, even though it's like Brother Moore says, you know, he's helping us more than we know. That's when he's helping you more than you know. Um, you know, I didn't know. I wasn't like, I'm choosing joy in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, as a kid, I wasn't doing that. You know, but the Lord was showing me all along the way, all along the way what to do. And sure, there's mornings when you're, it's time to sing, and your flesh doesn't want to. You don't want to. I don't want to go smile. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but you know what? If you make the choice to do it, God will meet you every time 
where you are, and the anointing will come on you. And it's like, oh, there it is. You know, that's that. That's what it is. So we got to yield to. We got to press into it. Sometimes, sometimes it takes more pressing than others. Amen. And um, but God is faithful. He's so faithful. It's like sometimes, you know, Kevin and I get the honor of still getting to be in youth. Those awesome people in youth. You guys, awesome people over there. Give me a shout out. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> But sometimes on Wednesday, you may have taken like 15 prayer requests that are just like, wow, okay, you know. <laughs> but, and you're tired, you know, it's like, oh, I just want to go home and watch TV or whatever, you know. But what good is that? That's, <laughs> watching TV is not going to do you a lot of good when you need to yield to joy. But, you know, then we'll go in there and those guys, they're so funny. They're so full of life and they're such awesome, loving people, you know, and it just refreshes my soul every time I, every time I'm with them, you know, and you got to choose in your life to be with people that refresh your soul. You know, I always tell Kevin, like, I don't want no high maintenance friends, you know, <laughs> I just like cruise like you do, <laughs> you're just easy, you know, and I want to be that kind of friend. I want to be an easy friend, you know, where I'm not, I don't have a lot of drama, Let's just have some fun. Amen. And praise the Lord. Well, um, now, like I said, I'm going to open up to some testimonies. And I've asked uh, Crystal to share her testimony. So if you want to come on up, girl. She has a good one about being an overcomer through joy. Amen. Kevin, I'll give you a mic. And <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I think I've always been kind of a happy, joyful person. I've just always loved to laugh. Um, I like to play practical jokes and pranks, and my family <laughs> usually gets the brunt of it. Um, but a few years ago, I allowed depression in, and I was probably, it probably went on for about a year or so, and I mean, some thoughts had come of harming myself and different things, and... Um, Mrs. Moore actually one night sent me a text, and she said, you have a ministry of joy on your life. And that anointed word broke that yoke of depression off of me. It was just like instant, and never since that day, that night, had a thought again about harming myself. Um, and so after that, I was on a mission. Um, wherever I went, I went to work, I went to the deli at the store, I mean, everywhere I went, I was just on a mission to make at least one person smile, somebody happy, and would come home fulfilled after that. Um, but there came a time about a year ago where I had an opportunity to practice what I preached on myself. Hi. Practice. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, there was a month where it was just like, thing after thing kind of hit me. It was pile on at its finest. And I had one nostril above water. And I cried for a minute, you know, had a moment. I cried. And then I'm like, girl, get up and go do some laundry. <laughs> and so I went over and I started doing some laundry. And I don't know if everybody else plays this game, but I like to shove like four loads in one, you know? <laughs> so it was like to the top. And so... But I had this kind of like aha moment, and as I'm throwing, each, it felt like 20 times because there were so many clothes in there. But each time, I would say, I win. I win. Every load, I win. And by the end of it, I hyped myself up. I was like, I am winning every single thing that's coming against me. I'm going to win, and then I'm going to win again, and then I'm going to win again. Yes. And the Lord knew that I needed that strength in him that day because a couple days later, somebody had come to me with some kind of shocking news, which was the cherry on top of the pile. <laughs> and I just started busting out laughing. And they're crying. And they're like, wait, why are you laughing? I said, if I don't laugh right now, I'm going to be on the floor crying with you. And that's not going to do anything. And so the Lord is so faithful. He worked every single one of those things out that happened that month. I mean, his hand was on it, things that there's no way I could even do it. So it wasn't even worth me worrying about. But I just, you know, the Lord's helped me. He's helped me overcome it. And there is freedom and joy, Yes. you know. And when, when you've been set free, 
there's, Hallelujah. you have joy. Yes. You're free indeed. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that good? See, if that's all we do tonight, then that's good. <laughs> We've had great church, you know. Does anybody else have, have one? You all just can't wait to get up here and get the microphone. I understand that. Well, let me tell you about a couple times where I did not have joy. Like I say, I've been here for, on staff for 20 years. And my job interview consisted of, it was a Wednesday night. <clears throat> I'd come to church. And Mrs. Moore said, can I see you in the back afterwards? So I'm back there. And she's like, Suze? She said, I don't know what you can do, but I need your joy around here. Do you want to work for me? <laughs> All right. I can do that. <laughs> but you know, it, 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 getting a job because you're joyful, that's a pretty good benefit. Amen? I mean, the best job, the best place I've ever been my whole entire life, fulfilling what I know is right for me because I was happy. <laughs> you know, God is so good. He has such good things in store for us. And if we're expecting them in joy, then they'll just come across our path. And I love it because God speaks through laundry. He's, I mean, he's so good. He can just speak through whatever it is that you need it. But a couple of stories, um, just so you can laugh with me. Um, we were doing, uh, cleaning out some shelving, and we had gotten new stationery for our mail out. And so we'd been dusting the old stationery for about a year. <laughs> so, you know, it's in the corner, you know. And so I asked Mrs. Moore if we could uh, burn it because we weren't ever going to use it again, you know, for anything else. And so she said yes. So we, um, I got it all organized. This is the good. Don't touch the good. This is the bad. Take all the bad. And we were going to burn it because at that time we lived out in the country. And so... We loaded it up, and we, on Saturday, we're burning it. We're just tossing them in, having a big old bonfire. And the very last envelope, I noticed, like, oh, bummer, this is the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> bummer, right? So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I burned all the good stuff. <laughs> and so then your head immediately, you're going to get fired, you're going to, what you know, all the stuff that the devil tries to tell you. And so I spent the entire weekend, no sleep, freaking out because I burned the good stuff. I mean, I was just freaking, literally freaking out, you know. And I don't freak out very often. But I, was, I had let myself get in a freaked out position on that. So Monday morning, this was like way back in this old church and uh, Mrs. Moore was still coming to the office then. So Monday morning, as soon as she got there, I was knocking on the door. I'm like, you know, I got to tell her. I got oh, I don't know. I don't want to tell her. I don't want to tell her. You know, but I knew I had to tell her. <laughs> so I go in. And sometimes when I get nervous, my face gets really red, and I can't hide that I'm nervous. <laughs> I just get all splotchy and red, you know. So I'm just like, and so she knew that about me already. And she's like, what's wrong? I said, well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> You know that bad stationery that we're supposed to burn? Well, we burned the good stationery. <laughs> and she's like, she looks at me, she's like, well, I'll just take it out of your hide for the next 20 years. <laughs> and it was done, you know. So I spent all those hours freaking out over absolutely nothing. You know, absolutely nothing. How many hours do we spend freaking out over absolutely nothing? Well, I'm not going to do it. You either, right? Amen. And uh, another time is uh, we were on stage and I was leading that day and uh, some of you who know me know this, know this story, but Brother Moore at the end of service had asked for a certain song. Well, when he asked for it, I couldn't think, I couldn't think how to sing it to save my life. I was just like, ah, ah, you know, and you know, of course, in that moment, it feels like it's an hour when it's just a few seconds, but I was like freaking out. Like, I, well, I, <laughs> and it was like a super familiar song. I just, you know, couldn't do it. And I hesitated so long that Brother Moore turned around and said, just sing anything. <laughs> He's so gracious. Lo, these 20 years, he has been so gracious to me and all of us who lead. And, you know, they're just so thankful for all of our help. You know, they're gracious to all of us. Um, so there again, I let myself freak out all afternoon. And then I thought, well, okay, I'm just going to call Mrs. Moore and say I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? 
And, you know, here I am thinking, oh, they're thinking about Susan all day long. <laughs> like they have nothing better to think about <laughs> than my mess up. <laughs> oh, vanity, all is vanity. <laughs> um, so I just texted her. I said, I'm so sorry. This big old long text, blah, 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 blah. You know, and she's like, Sus, take a nap. <laughs> Go get some ice cream. It's okay. You know, and Brother Moore said, it's, it's hard to start a song cold sometimes, you know, so gracious again, you know, so all these years I've been learning, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out, you know, and so now I'm way stronger than I was in the beginning about not freaking out, you know, and you, if you feel like you're a person tonight, you're like, I can't, I can't choose joy. I, yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's up to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is so good. I got two, page, two one and a half pages of notes, so I'm on the last half. Okay, any testimonies? No, okay. <laughs> no I'm not concerned because it, it'll be what it'll be, amen? And we've laughed and had a good time so far, so. Okay, where? What? Tell me. My lovely assistant, Kevin. Oh, yes, come on down. Come David on Butte. down. You're the next contestant on Share Testimony. <laughs> I don't promise there's prizes, but, you know. Yeah. God is good to us. So, so good. Are you sure you want to hand this to No. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Aren't you glad her 20 years is up, she paid for the stationery? <laughs> Yes! I was thinking you're the free! Same thing. <laughs> My faith has become sight. I grew up in a denominational church as a young boy. I used to want to stand up and go, Is anybody alive in here? And of course, I got rebellious. And um, years later, this is actually 1992 at Rama, and we're having a winter Bible seminar in the new RCA building. It's Thursday night, and Brother Moore gets up. Brother Hagen called him up, started singing, This Is That, spoken by the prophet Joel. And if you haven't heard it, you need to, and keep it around to help you, because <clears throat> it's a yielding thing. Of course, all of us that drive, this is what's exciting, natural stuff. My dad said, now this is an on-ramp. You hit that accelerator, so when you get up there, you're up to speed, and whether they move over or not, you just keep going. <laughs> well, so right. I learned how to do this, so I'm yielding to this, right? And so this is, was new to me. I had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, spoke in other tongues, Brother Moore singing this song, and next thing you know, start getting drunk. And drunker, and drunker, and rolling on the floor, and laughing hard, and drunker, and drunker, and drunker. And so Rhonda and I were engaged at the time. We were going to be married the next month. We're going out to the car. Of course, she took me to my car. She was concerned about me. And I'm rolling on the grass in a suit. <clears throat> and she's like, what? No. I said, oh, God used to get me home when I was doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. This is easy. This is his stuff. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it is a yielding thing. It was easy for me to yield to that because I'm like, Lord, you were holding out on me. Right? Because in the drug world and drinking world, they like to share. Come on. Get people started. Here, take a little. Well, that's what Brother Moore was helping us do. Here, enjoy. Partake, partake, partake. And that joy is that choice. It's a choice. And the best thing, like Miss Crystal, you might as well laugh. Why not? Right? It's not going to help to do anything else but that joy. It's so easy to get in that flow when you've been around it. Where people... You get close to them, and it rubs off on them. Amen. 
That's Amen. right, brother. Yeah. And you made it home right. fine. It looks like. Good, good. And you know, you can have that joy in your very own home. You don't have to wait for a church service. You know, sometimes people, I hear people go, oh, why don't we have this or that or in our services or whatever. You know what? If we all came with faith, <laughs> that might help things along a little bit. Amen? So praise God because we know the Moors are always led in what they do. And they are just so wanting all of us to live at such a high, wonderful, joyful level. Amen? So he was talking about that story, uh, Vic Victory. Do you remember you guys, most of you know that story and Terry Trial <laughs> about going up the mountain and Terry was just like, oh, woe is me. But Vic is like, what? No big deal, you know? And your everyday life can be that way. Like, no, this is no big deal. Amen? Another time whenever, at uh, one point in my life, is over a weekend, actually on a Friday night after church, someone said something to me that was very harsh and it just hurt me. You know, someone, if you... If you could put a lot of stock in people and they say something to hurt you on purpose, well, it's not fun, you know. But there again, you got a choice. Well, for a couple of days, I chose the wrong, I made the wrong choice. And I just let it get on me. I'm like, how could they do that to me? You know, whoa, whoa, way, 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 <laughs> you know. So I started crying and whatever. And Saturday I was bummed out. Sunday I was bummed out. And, and then it came to work Monday morning, and I just, I thought, I'm not going today. I'm just not going. And then you think, what am I going to say? <laughs> Everything I would have to say would be a lie. <laughs> That's not good. Let's not add that on to already you being in the depth of despair, you know. But I laid there for probably 15 minutes trying to think of what I could say to get out of work. Is that crazy? A complete waste of 15 minutes. <laughs> But I did, but I just like pulled the sheets over my head. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to face people. I don't want to blah, 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 you know. Well, so I made the right choice. Okay, I'm going to work. Well, I got ready. I still wasn't feeling it. But I had made a choice, a step toward joy, even though I hadn't felt it yet. You know, sometimes you don't feel it right away. Sometimes you got to press on a little bit. And so I got ready. We're on our way to work. And Mrs. Moore texts me again. <laughs> She's done this to me a lot over the years. <laughs> Kicked me right out of my comfort zone. And it's been very good for me every, every single time. But she texts me the most random thing. She said, why don't you lead the staff this morning in singing and dancing? <laughs> what? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> singing and dancing? Of course, in my head, I'm like, no. And inside, I'm like, oh, that's awful. This is awful timing. <laughs> but the Lord was helping me. He's rescuing me. And so now I have a choice to do it or go, no, I'm not going to do that. You know? And so I get there, and we have our staff time every morning. And so I said, y'all, and I felt so dumb saying it, you know? <laughs> Mrs. Moore wants to me to lead you all in singing and dancing. <laughs> and they were kind of like, okay, okay. <laughs> but we did it. We jumped around and we sang. I don't remember what we sang. But, you know, while we were doing it, that depression absolutely broke off of me like breaking ice and shattering off of me. You know, and then I look back and I think the devil was trying to lead me into depression. And I've never been, like, I'm like Crystal. I've been pretty happy in my whole life, you know. I like to laugh. I like to have fun. But he was trying to destroy me, you know, through depression. Praise God. There again, the Lord's helping us more than we know. Mrs. Moore's helping me more than I know. <laughs> I'm so thankful for her. I'm so thankful that she was led by the Holy Ghost to do that. So I told her later, I said, well, I said, I just want to let you know, and kind of told her the scenario. And she's like, I know. <laughs> she knows me better than I know myself. Praise the Lord. But choosing joy is always the better idea. Always the better idea. Yielding, submitting. Because if I hadn't been in submission to Mrs. Moore, I wouldn't have known that freedom. You know, I had to submit what I felt like, submit what I was thinking, submit all the junk, just to take a baby step of faith. You know, God is not 
sometimes he's just, it's not like a big old giant leap for mankind, you know. It's just like that little bit like, okay, I'll do it. Just saying, yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, do, I'll take that baby step, you know. So praise the Lord. God is good, amen? amen. Everybody say, I will be joyful will be all, of all of my days. I choose joy, I choose joy. Today. today, five minutes from now, minutes. Tomorrow. tomorrow, all my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Choir, why don't you guys go ahead and come up. Um, we have a new song to teach you about joy. And so I believe that I have saved time in the night for singing and dancing. <laughs> right? You know, Brother Moore taught those sermons about party like years ago. Let's do it, y'all. <laughs> Let's just shake off stuff that you need to be shaken off. It doesn't matter if it's finances that are struggling, if you're struggling, if healing, if, if you're struggling, marriage, if you're struggling, kid, it doesn't matter what it is. It just doesn't matter what it is. God is bigger, and his joy is your strength. And I wanted to read, um, and you know, a lot of times with me, people are like, well, oh, you're just naturally happy. You're just, you know, that's just the way you are. No. Joy is not a personality thing. It's not. It's for all of us. Amen? It is for every one of us, and he's so good. So, so good. It's our choice every single day. And yielding and submitting to it and choosing it. Um, I want to read Psalm 100, uh, 1 and 2 in the message. I really like the scripture in the message. I'll give him a moment. Calm down, Susan. Just a Go back to cruising. <laughs> but Psalm 100, 1 through 2 in the message, it says, I like that part. It says, bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Now, did anybody do that today? Did you bring God a gift of laughter or did you sing, into, sing yourself into his presence? Well, tonight's your night. Hallelujah. Woohoo! Everybody say, tonight's my night. <laughs> It's so good, though. Bring a gift of laughter, thinking that God loves laughing. We were eating at a restaurant last night, and there was a song came on the radio. It was like, you know, just a jazzy little tune. And I was just looking at all the people in the restaurant. There was one little girl in there and all the adults. What's the little girl doing? You know, she's sitting over her seat. I'm like, why are all of us adults not standing up and doing that? You know, why don't we dance more? Why don't we smile more? Why don't we laugh more? You know, it's our choice. It's, it's our pure, wonderful freedom to choose joy every single day. Hallelujah. And Psalm 9, 1 through 2, in the message as well. I'm thanking you, God, from a full heart. I'm writing the book on your wonders. I'm whistling, laughing, and jumping for joy. I'm singing your song, Hi God. Have you jumped for joy today? It's not too late. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Were there any more testimonies? I don't want to spend in the crowd. Oh, come on down. Oh, I like these two people. <laughs> <laughs> I like all of you people. <laughs> I heard somebody say, what about the rest of us? <laughs> I love all of you. <laughs> okay. uh, hello. Um, so uh, in my, I'm 25. In my teenage years, I just struggled a lot with depression and just being pretty angry with, uh, uh, we moved here for the church in 2005 and we moved away from like all my extended family and that was tough and so I just kind of chose depression and chose anger a lot and um, it was like I'm naturally a pretty joyful person and so it was like purposeful and like purposefully spiteful to people and like I would start to like something about Branson and then I'd be like no you're angry, remember? You're upset because you moved here. And it was like, I had to like coach myself that I was upset about it. And like the, pretty much the first family that we met here uh, were the Herberts. And they are 
uh, just a bunch of joyful people. And um, <laughs> that bothered me. <laughs> and they were like, they were like my best friends, but I was purposefully spiteful to them. Um, and they, they're merciful and great, and they continued to be nice. Um, and um, kind of after a few years, we parted ways and just didn't see each other as much. Uh, their homeschooling schedule changed, and so they were not coming over as regularly. And um, I just kind of, I was like upset, I thought about that a lot, and was like upset and spiteful and just like, uh, they ditched me and stuff like that, which was all just lies and stuff that the devil was just, you know, I would like talk about it and he'd be like, yeah, that's true, they're not very nice. <laughs> and um, it was just really silly. And I had a pretty bad uh, high school, like four years of high school and stuff. And um, my brother had started, my brother had like reconnected with the Herberts and um, had invited me to go to their Thanksgiving in 2015. And so I went and had Thanksgiving with them and that was like the first time that I had hung out with them in many years and it was like so fun. It was such a joyful house. And I was like, oh, I miss this. I wanna be around this. And uh, the Lord, like just a little bit was like, well, it just was a little bit. I could only hear it a little bit, but he was like, you can, you can choose this. And, um, and so I like thought about that a lot. And then um, I think in like the end of the next year, uh, my brother had been inviting me to go to a Bible study at Jenna's house or at her apartment. And, um, and I kept saying no. And I was like, I'm not. I was really like seriously thinking about how I didn't want to be joyful. Like it was so stupid. But <laughs> um, I finally said yes and I went to it and just, it was so fun. And it was so good to be around these people. And I went several times and then I got prayed over and I, the Lord had just been dealing with me like, you just need to choose something else and your life can be different. And uh, so when I got prayed over, it was like, hey, you're going to have to leave a lot of things. You're going to have to make some changes, but it's not going to be bad. The Lord's going to provide a totally new life for you, and you're not going to miss anything. He's going to bring you up. And, um, and that was scary, but I knew it was the Lord. And so I chose uh, to be joyful and I chose to be happy and I chose to just be like, whatever the next step is, it's going to be good and I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow the Lord. And that week, um, that was the start of like, I got an entirely new friend group and I reconnected with the Herberts for real. And um, Isaiah, who is my husband, spoiler, uh, um, <laughs> uh, we were best friends for a year and then at the end of the year um, he asked me on a date and we have been together for six years and we've been married for three and like our entire ministry together has been basically teaching joy and it's been children's ministry and it's so fun all the time and so it's good. good. Yeah. Good. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. That's right. Praise God. Hello. Um, so last year I had like a pile on a couple of months. Um, and I just had like a lot of bad things happening. But something that my family really like really um, said a lot was like, okay, hey, whatever happens, we're choosing to be happy. <laughs> So we said that all the time. Um, and so it just really stuck in, in me that like no matter how bad of a day you're having, you can always choose to be happy. There's always at least like one good thing. Like if you had the worst day ever, we're still saved. And so like 
at least we're going to heaven, you know, that's awesome. But anyway, it started like my mom passed away and then um, I got in a car accident a couple months later. And then like through all that, I was trying to finish school, but through each one of those things, I kept choosing to be happy. So I have and had a great relationship with my mother. And so like, I'm so happy that I had that. And I know where she is and I know I'll get to see her again. And so I'm happy about that. And I know like not everyone has that relationship with their with their parents and their mom. So I'm so, so, so grateful that I have that. And like I have so many new like spiritual mothers now. Um, anyway, so that was like choosing joy through that situation. My car accident, I was like, I really liked my car. It was, I had just bought it a couple months ago. It was my car. I put premium in it. And, <laughs> That's right. and anyway, so I was like really excited that I had my car. And when I got in the car accident, I was like, what the heck, like my car. And then I'm like, hold on, I'm alive, first of all. <laughs> like, that's good. Um, and then it was, it was on a Friday night. And then that night, um, Mr. Rob was, was teaching. And he said a story about um, his son went over to a friend's house. And his bike got backed over by his friend's parents. And anyway, just like without missing a beat, he said, it's OK, God got me that bike. He can get me another one. And so I was like, oh, that's right. God got me that car. He can get me another one. And it was less than three weeks later, I got the same car. It was, it's a Mazda Miata. I got the same car, uh, six years newer and 30,000 less miles. And people like sewed into me. And I got to pay it off completely in cash. <laughs> so, That's awesome. and you still so, yeah, and I still put premium in it. <laughs> um, so, like, just. I got in a car accident, but it's okay. God got me that car. He can get me another one. So choosing joy in that situation. And through this whole time, I'm like working on college, trying to graduate that year. And I, college was not my favorite, but I did it. I graduated Yay. and um, I, the program that I did, I got it for free. I got like all my, like the tuition was paid for free for two years and then, um, they like gave out several grants through it, so I got paid to go to college. So <laughs> just choosing the joy in all of those situations, even though it was hard, like I had a rough time, but the Lord just helped me so much. And people would ask like, are you okay? Like, how are you good right now? And I'm like, it's the Lord, he helped me. And so just choosing the joy in every situation, like you, you can do it, you can always choose joy. So good. So good. You know, this is like, you know, we were talking earlier about the people when Nehemiah is like, grieve not. You're, you know, hang in there. You can do this. It's the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, they were crying like a couple of seconds ago, and now they're rejoicing and getting so much strength and hope. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter even if you're crying. Sometimes you can still choose joy. It doesn't matter. Amen. Praise God. Well, everybody stand up and let's, let's do this song. Um, it's new for us. You all may know it already. I don't know. But, um, and, but don't walk out, even though this is the end song, don't walk out because there's a little bit more to the party. Yes, a little bit more to the party. So, <laughs> well, I, and, and I, I do expect some movement around here, y'all. I mean, this talks about down in your soul, the joys down in your soul, and it affects your hands and your feet, you know. So praise the Lord. Go ahead, guys.
tonight we've talked about choosing joy that's that's the theme and you know if you'll choose joy you can be an overcomer I mean it doesn't matter what you're going through it, it just doesn't matter it doesn't matter because God's bigger and you can choose to laugh when we were little kids we used to play a game where we're gonna make ourselves laugh so we would do it and we'd be like just start being goofy and just make ourselves laugh you know sometimes as adults you need to just make yourself laugh you're just like I'm gonna laugh I'm gonna laugh I'm gonna laugh you know praise God he gave us the gift of laughter hallelujah well tonight ushers if you'll get ready with a gift I wanted to give you all a little present both here in Sarasota sorry online folks <laughs> but um I thought I'll give you a little joy to get started. It's an Almond Joy candy bar. Oh yeah, if chocolate and coconut don't make you happy. Well, <laughs> so get you a candy bar. Now I'm, I'm getting you started, but you, the rest is up to you, right? Choosing it tomorrow is up to you, hallelujah. God is good, amen. I love y'all so much. It is such an honor to have church family like we have. He is so good to us. He is so, so good to us. And I just want to remind you that scripture, bring a gift of laughter, sing yourselves into his presence. Bring a gift of laughter, sing yourself into his presence. So if you get out the door and something crazy happens, just sing yourself into his presence. You don't have to sing great. It doesn't have to rhyme, it doesn't matter. Just sing, amen? Praise God, I'll throw my paper away. Praise the Lord. Well, let's, let's stand up and let's just pray over ourselves. Hallelujah, then we'll sing and dance our way out of here. Amen? <laughs> I'll check here, you guys can go ahead and come up too. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. We got all these professional joy people up here. Professional dancers, look at that right there. <laughs> God is so good. Well, pray this after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving us joy. Your joy 
is our strength no matter what happens. And I purpose in my heart to choose joy every day, every moment of my life, no matter what happens. I choose joy. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to sing. I'm going to jump for joy. Thank you, Father, for being so good. Hallelujah. You can be dismissed, but I do expect some dancing. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. I get joy. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh,